Hello. Jeff, it's John. I was calling about this property on Hillcrest. Man, you are a persistent guy, aren't you? I just try to help folks. I'm not trying to buy it. I'm just trying to save it from impending auction if that's the that's the route that it's headed. So, so the long and the short of it is, uh, I've refinanced my I had a bankruptcy a long time ago. Okay. Back in two thousand seven. Yep. And since then I've refinanced the house twice. Okay. And one of the times, one of the times was I refinanced it from GMAC. Well, I take that back. I don't remember. But anyways, I did refinance it since, since my bankruptcy. Come to find out, this company, Real Time Solutions, is a servicing company. Okay. Uh, they've been sending me letters about how I owe this old loan, and I told my wife, don't worry about it. They can't do anything because... I don't even know who the hell they are. I And I didn't talk to them because I've always been told, uh, treat it like, uh, don't talk to the IRS without your attorney present. Right. So, ignored it, ignored it, ignored it. So, finally, I get this letter a couple weeks ago, well, you know, a yeah. notice of default. Correct. So, I started looking into it because, obviously, I knew that it was a lien had obviously been recorded, something had been recorded on against my house. So... Did a little bit of research. I talked to an attorney over here in Monterey area. Okay. And he said, he looked at it real quick for me. He goes, yeah, they got a lien on your house. I said, yeah, but they can't collect on that. You know, I've already refinanced it. Nobody has come to me with my two refinances and said, oh, by the way. Right. You have this recorded lien and we need to pay it off before we can refinance. So it has to be included in your new loan. Right. No, but the two people didn't say that. And both of them are reputable companies. So the attorney told me what this is what he said. These guys are bottom feeders. So they wait until your house has enough, enough equity in it that they can foreclose on you and pay off both the first and themselves. And I'm like, oh, Let's wow. Yeah. So, so anyways. Uh, he says, it happens all the time. You'd be amazed at how many people are in the same boat. They think that that loan, because I tried six years ago, even longer than that, right. to find out who this these people were. And the attorney I hired took me for three grand, and he was useless. I found out more about it myself than he did. And the GMAC loan was sold. They sold off that division, and they sold off these loans. Mm. But guess what? Unless you're able to get into the system, uh, you can't see all this stuff. Right. You're just Google. You're just googling stuff. Right. So, uh, and I won't keep you on the phone forever. But I ran into a retired judge at Home Depot one time, and I knew him. I seen his picture on the news or something like that. He was local. And I said, "Are you Judge So and So?" Oh yeah, yeah, I am. I said, "Do you mind if I ask you a question?" He goes, "Is it a legal question?" And I said, "Yeah." And I told him kind of about this i said why is it that the average citizen can't just go before a judge and say gma gmac is gone they shouldn't be able i can't even if i had the money i couldn't even pay them right because i don't know where to pay right he goes i he goes i agree with you it is it's a system that's rigged it's exactly what he said yep I, he goes you know chan and this way he said chances are whatever it is that you know you're, you're dealing with they'll go away once you haven't responded to them so uh, i'll never let this happen again first uh second I've, I've learned a lot about when they sell off your loan to somebody mm -hmm. but they just sit there and, and honestly my equity has been enough for five years at least uh and my only guess is these this real-time solutions doesn't have a very crack staff to stay on top of things Right. So they just finally decided to go through old shit. And so, long and the short of it, I've already reached out. Okay. I don't want to do it, but I reached out to a bankruptcy attorney uh, about doing a Chapter 13. I have on this, uh, on the, the default notice, I owe this company seven, right around 70 grand. I also have about $70,000 in credit card debt. Uh, so, for me, and having done my research, because the old loan that I did, the old bankrupt, who was a Chapter 7, 
I don't want to. I don't want to lose my trailer, my cars, and do all that. Right. I, I'm willing. I'm willing to do a chapter thirteen because I also realized long ago that it didn't take me long to rebuild my credit. Right. I make. I make between me and my wife, we make one hundred and forty thousand dollars a year, and we net about a hundred and ten. You know, so. Um, I'm probably going to go down that road unless you have some other advice, but I, I, you know, it's a five year deal with the chapter 13. I'll wrap this up. I'll keep my home. I'll pay off all my credit cards based on, you know, a five year payment plan, which will actually be less than what I'm currently paying out every month to those same credit cards. Right. So, so I will, I'll net, maybe $500 at the end of the, every month that I'll have more in my pocket based on what I see with the bankruptcy numbers. Right. Uh, so in five years, I'll be semi debt free. This real time solutions I was told cannot be stripped. It should have been done in that first bankruptcy that I did that chapter seven. Now in a chapter 13, it can't. So I'll still have to pay these guys. Okay. But the net net of it is, I, hey, in five years, I'll have gotten rid of $70,000 worth of credit card debt. Yeah, that's Where the I, upside. I can tell you right I can tell you right now, I probably wouldn't have been able to do that without refinancing my house. Right. Uh, so there you go. That's my story. Uh, I'm ashamed of myself for letting it get to this point. Uh, uh, but I also, I didn't want to talk to real-time solutions and open up because I've also heard the can of worms is the minute you start talking to them, they can restart the clock on any statute of limitations. Yeah. I, now you. Yeah, I would. Uh, it's maybe. now MTC Financial. Is that who currently holds the loan, or that was the old one? Uh, I don't know who MTC Financial is. Yeah, it's. I, I have. Yeah, it shows on 315 of 2024, so that would have been like a month ago, MTC Financial Incorporated is who filed the notice of default. And they're, uh, I, I yeah, $73,306 is what it says. And then I've got a telephone so number that, right here for them too. So that is, that is real-time solution. Okay. And the trustee that filed the or the default notice is under a trustee. And, and my guess is this. I don't know who real-time solutions or resolutions right. really is. Right. Other than on the paperwork, it says uh, loan servicing or loan servicer. Right. Uh, now, the trustee is somebody different, but I don't recall it saying MTC. It may yeah, I see trustee name. mail care of name Bernardo So. Tilo, I think is how you say it. And then trustee name, yeah. MTC Financial Incorporated. They're in Irvine. There's the number. Yeah, that's, that's probably correct. But they're not the one. I think they've been paid or they're a subsidiary of real-time resolutions. Yeah, because it says the original no, beneficiary lender is GMAC Mortgage LLC. And that goes back to... 2011 or no 2007 yeah i see that right here yeah 2007 yep 3 1 of 2007 so let me ask you what obviously you need to make money doing what you're doing i don't begrudge you or, or blow you off in any way about that but what is your interest in helping people other than out of the goodness of your heart Okay, so you know, do you have expertise? Yes, sir. So first off, I'm a licensed real estate broker in California. Next up, I'm also an investor. So I buy properties. So essentially, a okay. lot of folks uh, get in situations like this, and they really don't know what to do. And some of these people, right. they can go get a loan modification, and it doesn't cost them anything. There are a bunch of scumbags out here in the world that'll call you up and say, hey, I can get you a loan mod, and then they try to charge you $5,000. And I've seen a lot of these little old ladies get jammed up. Yeah, and I get super pissed off about that. So at a minimum, I just want to let folks know, hey, 
whatever you do, don't go pay some knucklehead to help you do something that you can do for free. And I basically walk you through the steps and whatnot, right? We could try to get you a loan mod. We can figure out reinstatement. Like I just lay out all the options. Obviously, bankruptcy is something you could do as well as you know. Um, but I basically walk folks through all of their options. And in the end, if all they can do is sell their house, well, then I would just hope that they would let me sell their house, if that makes sense. No, I, I get it. And I, and I, appreciate, I, I applaud you for what you do because, and I don't know you from Adam. Sure. But you, you sound genuine to me, and I'm a very straight-up person. I mean, if I tell you something... That's what I'm going to do for you. Right. It, you know, I, 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 so I'm glad there are people like you out there. Um, I know that I did call Real Time Solutions, you know, last week. I think it was. Uh, yeah, Friday last week. And I talked to the nicest lady. I mean, she was genuine, just like you. She says, look, this is what we can do for 10% of what you you know what you uh, owe seventy grand, uh, seventy four thousand dollars or whatever. We're willing to put you on a one year zero interest if you start making the payments, and at the end of that year we will reinstate your loan. And I'm like going, okay. I mean, ten percent—that's a lot of money, seventy five hundred bucks. Right. But I could see where if I absolutely needed to go down that road, you know, okay. They'll pull away. They won't foreclose on my house. Right. So, uh, but as my bankruptcy attorney told me today, he says, look, you could go with them and do that. That's fine. And that'll, they'll pull away and hopefully they will. He goes, you never know. Right. That they will, you know, pull that notice of default and you'll be fine. He says, but any way you look at it, you're going to end up paying these guys. And zero interest for a year. Actually, my interest rate on their loan is only 4%. So, and that's what he told me today. He goes, you know, you actually got to, you did this a long time ago. You got a great interest rate. Yep. You can't change that on it. So, so I, yeah, I mean, and like I said, the lady was very nice. I, I kind of thought, well, God, I got to choke down $7,500 and, and restart my payments. It's not a bad loan modification. It's, it's, you know, except for the initial payment, you know. Uh, but I also asked her at that time, can I renegotiate my loan with you? Let's say I told her I had $35,000 cash right now. Would you take that and call it even? She goes, well, we do stuff like that, but I can't tell you what the numbers would be. And I asked her, I said, okay, could you please send me an offer. Throw me an offer, you know? Yeah. I said, if I had to come up with 35 grand, I could find somebody that would loan me 35 grand and put off the payments on it for 10 years. I've got some really good friends. Right. Um, but I got nothing from her. I got this real simple paperwork. This is what we would like to do with you. It did not lay out anything like the notes I took over the phone. Right. So I was, I was kind of disappointed with that because it's like, okay, and I, and all, you know, all, all, in all honesty, I would say, if somebody came to me and said, throw me out a number, I'm gonna like, well, no, you throw out a number. She should have said to me, well, make us, make us an offer, right? You know, uh, rather than, hey, we'll cut our nose off and 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 help you out, right? I didn't expect her to say, yeah, we'll take thirty five grand, but I expected her to answer me with, yeah, we can do something like that, please. Let's talk about it, or here's the person you need to talk to, because, no, well, I'd rather pay 35 grand or 20 grand or, you know, 10 cents on the dollar. We all would, you know? So. No, 100%. Well, I, I mean, I'm going to definitely, if you could do me a favor and, and uh, text me to this number, your contact information, uh, I will put you in my my phone book and i will share with anybody i know if it's running into these problems oh i appreciate because that so what i'm gonna do is I, i'm gonna text you from my quote real cell phone number the one that i carry around in my pocket and not this one um absolutely 
it. So it won't say spam and all that. And I've had that same phone number for, I don't know, 20, 25 years, right? So I'm not hiding yeah, from anybody. Mine yeah. Right. So, um, I, I, go ahead. I, I, I like to be a resource. I mean, I'm in sales. I want people to come to me for anything they need. And by, by having somebody, you know, in my pocket like you, I mean, I can offer that to people. And hell, now that I know that you're not John buys Bay Area houses dot com that I hear on the radio all the time, right? Uh, but you're an investor. I mean, th- that's somebody I know or somebody that needs it. I could, I could offer. Hey, give this guy a call. He's a straight shooter. He could help you out. I appreciate you know? that. Yeah, that would be great. That would and be fantastic. A, and you're a real estate broker, so you're yeah. not just buying you know, depressed houses, you're probably financing or working on refis and stuff like that. Would that be correct? I do everything. So basically I try to figure out what problem it is that you're trying to solve. And then I try to give you a couple of different options on how we can solve that problem. That's basically all I do. Um, you know, you help enough people get what they want. You'll get what you want. I just really want to play golf, my man. That's all I want to do. But there's a bunch of scumbags out here oh trying to steal from little old ladies. And, uh, I, I, I get a, I, I get a rush out of, out of cold calling people. Cause not everybody's as friendly as you on the other, on the other line. <laughs> you know, that's funny. When I moved into sales 35 plus years ago, uh, I enjoyed cold, cold calls and I had mm-hmm. so many of my friends to say, Oh, I hate that. I said, why? It's an opportunity. Yep. I mean, you never know where what's going to come out of it. And if Correct. You're, if you're genuine and you just, I mean, you don't have to be a sleazeball. Right. You know, I probably, I mean, I'm in tractor sales. I'm in a totally different industry than I'm used to being in. But I, I can't tell you how many farmers and homeowners have said to me, man, you're so nice. I've had them tell me I'm genuine. And I'm like going, Okay, I mean, I appreciate that, but I don't have to. I don't want to work at it. I want to be Jeff, you know, and just get through life. Go play golf, although I'm not a big golfer. <laughs> I want to just enjoy life, but I, I do get frustrated at the like you say, the scumbags. Out yeah, there. and there's a so, lot of them. I, you know, if I see you in the supermarket, I don't want to have to, you know, dart my eyes away and whatnot. I want to know that I did exactly like you said what I said I was going to do. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys that I deal with, you know, are farmers just like, uh, like you were talking about, I do a lot of handshake deals and whatnot, you know, it's based on my word. So, um, I get it, but are you, are you, are you out in Hanford? No, negative. I'm in Fresno, California. So basically I just have, I have this number, a Texas number, a Florida number. They get spammed up. They say, Hey spam telemarketer scammer whatever it is and then i just uh a lot of people some people are are litigious right they want to sue you because you called them and they're not on the do not call list i'm not selling anything so i'm not breaking any laws i'm just calling to help but most people direct their anger at me instead of the bank yeah and i i generally answer calls i mean i'm in sales i have to have to answer it right i'm the same way I, I, I try to be polite. I mean, I had a guy from a, I've got six different trucking companies calling me about, they want my business. You know how much trucking I do probably three times a year. And I told the guy today, I said, look, I'm going to be, be very polite. I'm a small fish. You're not going to make any money off of me. Mm-hmm. I said, but I appreciate you calling. And I, this is why I told him, call me back next year. I know that's a long ways away, but something might change. Right. You know? And, and I just try to, because look, Everybody's out there trying to make a living. Yep. But I, I want to work with people that are that are not just hustlers and, and you know, they'll, they'll hang up on you quicker than you'll hang up on them. Correct. 100% agree. So I will shoot you a text message here. Let's stay in touch. Perfect. I'm not going to make any money yeah. off of you, obviously, but I'm along for the education because – I don't know everything there is to know about real estate. I got a lot of the answers. I don't have them all. So I am curious to where this is going to go. I'm wondering if they just bought an old, you know, like when they buy those old debts and whatnot, that's what I think they're going to do and why they're going to settle for seven grand basically as your quote test period. And then we'll reinstate a loan that you don't even owe, but you know, we figured out a way to screw you out of 70 grand. So play along with us. 
and, and you know, it, again, just like you said, I don't know everything. But when things like this happen, I learn. I'm not making that same mistake again. Right. The next refi I ever, ever do, I'm going to know what's on my, uh, what's if there's any liens against my house. I mean, it's not hard to find out. Did you get you title insurance? Did you get title insurance when you, uh, when you bought the house? You might be able yeah. to reach out to them because that was what would protect you. When you got the refinance loan, basically there would be a title insurance policy that would, you know, protect you about some encumbrances and whatnot that you were not aware of. Now that would be through the broker. Through the I mortgage company, insurance. the mortgage company that you um, bought the house through. I, Let me see if I can right. find that information. Uh, deed. Because Let me see here. I, mean, I pay my. I, I pay my taxes through my escrow, but I pay for my own homeowner's insurance, but I don't know about the title insurance. So you got on title in 20, uh, 2004, correct? Back in the original, yes. Okay. At GMAC. Okay, yeah. So I'm looking at this. I'm trying to see if I can see the title. There's something called Western Resources Title. That's who you used the last time uh, in 2019. It says document type interfamily transfer. So that's probably the refinance. The loan amount was four hundred and thirty nine thousand yep. dollars. Jeffrey yep. and Cynthia Smith. Um, yep. The lender was Anchor Funding Incorporated. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Western Resources. Yeah. So that's where I would so, start there. So those guys should have. So it should have in some way. I would think the way it works is the when they refine it, don't they want to make sure that that second is taken care of? Yes, because right, because if they if they were the second and something went sideways like it is right here, they wouldn't get paid. So everybody wants to be in first position, and they couldn't be in first position unless they you know had title insurance to make sure, you know, that there was no lien from this, that, and the other thing. Now the IRS or whatever, they're going to get their money. They're going to hop right. to the front of the go. line, but, um, everybody else, like, you know, I, I did some work on your house. I put a lien. I'm not getting paid. You know, if there's not enough, uh, money there to pay off the debt. So right. I would start with the title company, but I'll shoot you a text from my real cell phone number right now. And then I'll circle back with you middle of the next week. And uh, if you've got anything you need in, uh, in the meantime and in between time, you can hit me up. But I'll give you all my contact information, uh, first, last name, yeah. all of that. And, uh, yeah, lock me into your phone, and uh, I'll check I in will. with you next week. Awesome. Jeff, I appreciate, the, I appreciate the education. Absolutely, Jeff. You have a great day, my man. I will talk to you next week. Take care. All right. Thank you. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Okay. So we're going to say interested.